Hi everybody, my name is Matt and this is What Matters to Matt. Now on this channel, I try to share with you the things that I'm doing to be the best I can be for the most important thing in my life, which always, always is my family. And today, keeping with the tradition on what I've been doing in a number of my videos lately, I wanna share with you exactly how my marathon prep is going. It is the first marathon I've ever done. Today, specifically, I wanna do a little bit of a review on the Cliff Shot Energy Gels. Yeah, I just wanna be great. Yeah, I just wanna be great. Yeah, I just wanna be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I just wanna be great. Yeah, I just wanna be great. Now, to say that I am new to nutrition when it comes to endurance, uh, endurance athletes, endurance sports is an understatement. I don't really know a whole lot about it, but one thing that I do know. And one thing that I hold near and dear to uh, my ability to, I think, succeed in a number of things I dive into is that I am a numbers guy. So when it comes down to it, I try to look at the best research out there, or at least the best suggestions on what exactly you need to perform at your best in anything that you do. Give you a little bit of an idea, a little bit of a background on me, is that over the last number of years, I have spent quite a bit of time in the gym that's been mostly losing weight and building up a little bit of muscle. So I haven't really done a whole lot of cardio stuff. Specifically, most of the cardio that I've done in the past has been more of to just manage my weight, not so much to actually do any sort of performance-based things. But what's different this time around is I'm recognizing and I'm realizing that rather than the things that I always worried about most when I was on uh, on a diet or when I was looking to just shed some pounds, get a little bit more shredded or a little bit more chiseled or just feeling better about the way I look, really looking at the aesthetics when back then the important things really honestly were total calorie input for the day and protein, protein, protein. And as long as I was hitting those things, really paying attention to the other macros like the amount of carbs, the amount of fat, really didn't matter a whole lot to me. It didn't seem to, as long as I hit that protein goal, whether it was more fats or more carbs, didn't really matter. As long as when I went into the gym, I was taking a decent pre-workout, uh, something like this, I've got this right here. This would be something that if I was going to the gym to do a weightlifting session, I would take something like this. This is Mr. High Nitro X pre-workout. Lots of beta alanine, lots of caffeine, lots of stimulants just to get you to lift just a little bit more, but not something that actually works that well when you're talking endurance athletes are running because obviously one of the things that that also does for me is jack my heart rate through the roof doesn't sustain me for longer than usually the general lifting session of being around an hour. And I know when I'm out there doing those long cardio runs, those long distance runs, and especially when I actually run my marathon, I'm gonna have to come up with some alternatives. And that is where the uh, shots, the different goos comes into play. Now I said that I am definitely a numbers guy. And just to give you an idea, it does say that on the back of these packs, on one of these goo, one of these shots, which is 34 grams, just to give you an idea of the cliff one. Now there is no caffeine added to this shot. Now I do get lots of caffeine every single day. But there's no caffeine added to this particular one or the ones that I tried. I had a couple of different ones on my last long run that we'll talk about. But overall, to give you an idea, there are, I'll put it up here on the screen, there are 110 calories in one 34 gram packet, total fat of 1.5 grams, 60 milligrams of sodium and 23 grams of carbs. Uh, 20, 12 of those are total sugars, which include 12 added sugars and there's zero grams of protein. Now that's very standard, that's very typical of, uh, of any one of these gels, any one of these shots. Simple sugars, able to formulas that are always branded as something that kind of is the ultimate, uh, ultimate thing to eat while you're on your run, fast digesting. But I did have a couple of questions. Now back to the numbers and where I wanna talk about a few more of the numbers just to give you an idea. When we're looking at this and it does say 23 grams, if you look up online, if you look at any of the research, it normally says between 30 and 60 grams of carbs that you will need while you're on your run per hour. Why is the window so big? Well, we're all so different. So even though there are some numbers to go with, 
depending upon your size, depending upon that engine that you have, depending upon how fit you are. Of course, if you're less efficient, if you're not as fit, you might need a few more carbs. You're gonna have to play with that. And for me, that comes down mostly to those long runs. I've got at least one every single week and it gives me a chance to experiment. And over the last number of weeks, I have been experimenting with a few different things, but this is the first week that I actually did a gel. So I am gonna talk about this one specifically. Now to, add a, now to add a little bit more to this, over the last few runs, I have been fueling with more than just the gels. I actually, on one of those runs, I took some of these and I have them with me, these Brookside dark chocolates, put a number in a baggie, measured out a couple of servings, made sure I had approximately around 45 grams per hour when I was on my run. So I tried that uh, last week. Uh, we actually went with the Fig Newtons. I went and took them on my run. Again, put a number in a, in a baggie and ate them every 35 to 40 minutes just to keep the right amount of grams of carbohydrates into my system. Uh, not when you first start the run. I feel like as long as I eat a decent breakfast and you try to emulate nothing new on race day, and you do will hear that a lot when you're going through any sort of marathon prep as being one of the things that people suggest. And I try to emulate that. So every single long run day, one of the things I have, maybe an hour and a half, two hours before, make sure that I get a full bagel in with a couple of servings of peanut butter and a banana put on top of that. I eat all that. That helps me get kind of fueled prior to the run. While I'm on the run, about 30 to 40 minutes in, that's when I start taking in other carbohydrates. I have also carried with me a bottle of Gatorade every time that I've been out. There are different supplements out there for that, such as Trailwind, but I've just been buying Gatorade um, and it's worked so it's worked pretty well so far. Now, when it comes to these Cliff flavor shots, these Cliff shot energy gels specifically, and if I'm going to review any more of the gels, because I plan on going through, I actually bought uh, some different goo brand ones. Uh, we've got the Chocolate Outrage. Vanilla bean, espresso love, and salted caramel. We're gonna try those out on our next long run. But when it comes to any one of these things that I'm gonna be ingesting, that kind of comes down to four main factors for me. One, probably the least important to be honest with you because I'm all about whatever works, whatever gets me there, but taste. Two is texture because we are dealing with goose, so it's totally different than actually eating actual food. Uh, three is how it felt in the digestive system. And I'm going to go through that in a minute because that was a very, very interesting one for me. And fourth is performance. Do I actually feel like it helped me out in any ways? Now, most of these goos, most of these different gels, when you look at the back of them, although they have minor differences uh, when it comes to performance, at the end of the day, they almost, almost all do very similar things. You can say that there are some differences, and there are in terms of caffeine, total carbs, the mixture of carbs, some of them actually have a few more calories, but that comes from fat. But overall, they're kind of similar, but we're still gonna to touch on that as something specifically when we're talking about each one of these separately, and especially today, be my first ones, the Cliff Shots. Uh, when it comes to taste, I had two different Cliff flavors with me on this run. Uh, one of them was the Raz flavor, and one of them was the chocolate flavor. Now, I did not like the Raz flavor. Uh, when I say taste is important for me for whatever reason, I don't know if it just seemed too oddly sweet in an odd berry artificial taste, but I didn't really like the Raz flavor. Chocolate all day. To be honest with you, I could eat these uh, all the time when it comes down to flavor. If you look online, some people are going to say that they think these are a little bit too sweet, but for me, Taste, 100%, they were awesome. Uh, when it comes to texture, and texture is a little bit of a tricky one because uh, when it comes to texture, when I'm out for my runs right now, and we are in the winter in New Brunswick, I try to keep these pretty warm and close to my body, but it did they did tend to get a little bit thick, a little bit more than, uh, a little bit more than I would have wanted. So the texture wasn't 100% great on these, and I don't think, in terms of the Cliff ones, again, if you go online and you just look at people comparing these to some of the other ones, uh, the Cliff ones and the Goo ones tend to be more on the thick side, people suggest, um, but especially in the cold. But I don't think that's gonna bother me so much uh, just when I was out on my runs here in the winter in, in New Brunswick, Canada, uh, the runs are pretty cold. But the marathon's not until May, so I'm not too concerned about that. 
to be fair, same thing happened when I tried the, uh, the chocolates or the Fig Newtons. All of them kind of froze up just a little bit, so I had to be aware of that. Anyways, so I'm not going to dock it any points when it comes to texture. Now, when it comes to how it felt on my stomach in terms of just digestion, uh, that was the most interesting thing for me. One of the things that they suggest with most of these gels, some of them not so much, and there is sort of a, a base for each of them in terms of how much liquid they suggest you take with them, but you are supposed to take some liquid when you're taking these gels, and you are supposed to take a full pack at once and then a certain amount of liquid. I can't remember how much, but again, I'm a numbers guy. So when I was out on my run, I made sure that I took almost exactly the amount that they asked for. And for me, oddly enough, and I consider myself to have an incredibly strong stomach, but the first one of these that I took, maybe maybe that's why I said I didn't like it so much, but the first one of these that I took were one of these Raz ones and it didn't go so well. My stomach didn't really like it. Now, 30 seconds later, uh, felt fine. So maybe that was just getting that in me and then the liquid and then I was going to be fine. And maybe that's just something I had to deal with. But as I got going, I did have another one of those Raz ones. I've got more empty backs here. I did have another one of those Raz ones and it was fine. I had a chocolate one. It was great. So I don't know if it was just, um, just that first one, but digestion didn't go that well. But after a while that did settle down and maybe it's just something I need to get used to. But I did want to note that because it, it was really interesting to me because I, I consider myself to have an incredibly strong stomach. And lastly is performance. Now performance for me, uh, I, I, it's, it's, it's kind of a hard thing, especially when you're looking at such a small sample size being one run with them. Uh, but that's kind of what we're left with in terms of the amount of time we have to try some of these different gels, different fuels out. Uh, and just to give you an idea on the day that I had these on that day, I was running a 24 kilometer run. So not super long, but long enough. And that I actually ran in the afternoon. The rest of that day had me pretty busy. I woke up at 4:30 that morning. I actually went for a back and biceps workout at 5:30 that morning, did that for about an hour and a half and then went and taught a grade two class, uh, for the morning. And then I had the afternoon off did that run in the afternoon and then went and worked at the gym that evening so on that run to be fair i was kind of spent and it was kind of a long run and maybe the back and biceps workout wasn't the best idea first thing in the morning when i knew i was going to be doing that long run in the afternoon after teaching but i did it anyways and they seemed to sustain me quite well even though of course i did have quite a bit of caffeine from all the coffee i drank that day but they seemed to work between these and the great gatorade bottle that i carried with me I was fine on the 24 kilometers. We'll see as I go forward with other goos whether they're gonna get the same result, but that worked very well. And quite honestly, so did uh, the Fig Newtons that I had the week before where, where I went 22 kilometers, but that was a more rested day, a little bit more traditional day that I had my long run. So you never know, but overall, I feel like performance wise, these worked great. They did the trick. They gave me the carbs that I needed. And the other thing that I wanted to mention about these that I like about the Cliff ones, I think uh, more than the Goo ones, this is certainly just kind of an environmental little neat thing. Might not be important to some, but it's kind of nice. They have this thing called a litter leash. Now, when you're out and about with these, and I'll probably put, I have probably already have before I, this point in the video, but I'll probably put where I was struggling to actually eat one of these and film myself and run at the same time and hold my Gatorade bottle. There was a lot going on. So it was a little bit of a struggle. So it probably didn't look that graceful when I actually did it. But having that little leash, knowing that I'm not actually getting, throwing any litter down, because when you tear this top off, whether you do it with your mouth, your fingers, I had gloves on, uh, that's gotta go somewhere. So this little tab here, when that tears off, lets that hang and it actually doesn't go anywhere. Here's an open one, this stays on it which is great. That was, uh, that was a nice added touch to the cliff ones that, that the goo ones don't have. And a lot of them don't have, but it seems to come on the cliff ones. And the other thing I wanted to swing back to was actually the caffeine. Now I mentioned that these ones, these cliff ones that I did get pick up don't have any caffeine. And actually the goo ones that I'm going to try next do have some caffeine in them. But one thing that I've noticed, uh, and feel free to comment in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on this and maybe your thoughts are I need to drink a little bit less caffeine than I currently do 
but they say things like 20 milligrams of caffeine maybe 30 milligrams of caffeine 40 milligrams of caffeine in the goo espresso so there's never actually a ton of caffeine in any of these just to give you an idea when we're looking at something like my pre-workout let's see if i can find it 400 milligrams of caffeine in the pre-workout when i take it so the espresso version the goo that i have that has the most has 40 400 in this now you could argue of course you don't want to take that much caffeine because you want to be able to control your heart rate during the run that's very very important but you could also argue that i'm so used to drinking so much coffee throughout the day and I'm so used to having so much pre-workout when I'm when I'm doing my my lifting that 40 milligrams of caffeine isn't going to do much for me. It's going to be an interesting, interesting experiment. I know there are some suggestions out there that it does a lot in terms of increasing focus, increasing all those things. But I wonder whether the amount of caffeine that I take, whether it's pre-workout or all the coffee I drink on a daily basis, really makes that part of it ineffective and just not necessary when I'm trying to pick which kind of goo or which kind of fueling to take with me on my long runs and ultimately in the marathon. So ultimately the question is, are the goos what I'm gonna go with? And would I actually ever buy these cliff goos again? And will I consider actually using them during the marathon and during some of my other long runs? I recognize that I do need some sort of energy in me. I do need to take on additional carbs. People can say all they want about uh, being fat adapted and using fat as fuel, and that's all cool and that's all really important. I'm going with what seems to be traditionally something that people work with or works best for the most amount of people, and that is to really focus on my carb intake. Would I take this? I guess one of the best questions is would I take this over something like the Fig Newtons or the chocolates? I'm gonna say yes, uh, mostly because I don't see any real advantage to, to munching on some Fig Newtons or the chocolates or anything like that. If I'm working hard, if I'm running, I want something in my system and I want it in there fast. And gels seem to be the fastest, easiest way to do that and I'm not spending time chewing and not like I'm going to waste a lot of energy chewing It's just uh, the less time the better. I want to be able to fuel every half hour, every 40 minutes and continue focusing on my run and nothing else. All that to say, yes, I would buy the Cliff uh, Shot Energy Gels again. And yes, if the other ones don't work out any better than them, they might be one of the things that I go with because one of the things I did not mention earlier when I was talking about all the other things that I listed in terms of how I would rate this was the cost. The Cliff ones are actually fairly cheap. I'll put some other options in the comment section down below, some links to a couple of different things on Amazon, a couple of different options because there are some with comparable prices. The Goose tend to be a little bit more expensive than the Cliff ones, but these are, at least in my area, uh, some of the cheaper ones there. So if they all do the trick, if they all seem very similar to me in the end, I'm more than happy to go with the Cliff Goose. So that is it. That's sort of my quick review on the Cliff Energy Shots. They were great. They were wonderful. They did the trick. They did exactly what I thought they would do. Uh, I would steer clear of the Raz one. That's just me. Uh, they have a vanilla one that sounds really appealing to me too. Vanilla, chocolate, traditional flavors, nothing too fancy. That works for me. My name is Matt. This was another video from What Matters to Matt and What Matters to Me Most is my family and I'll see you in the next one.